nerds, welcome back to my series where I go episode by episode in Amazon Prime's Wheel of Time and compare it to the books and show you guys all of the differences. Before we jump into this week's episode, I do want to say a comment about Matt in the last episode. I found out that Matt did not leave at the end of the season like I had previously thought, but rather quit the show after the last episode, which is why the showrunners had to scramble and leave Matt out of the two episodes. I think we should try to cut them some slack. It wasn't their choice to leave Matt out, and so I'm no longer going to hold that against them as a show running decision. I also heard that Matt dropped out for personal mental health reasons, and so I hope that he is doing well. With that said, let's get into the episode. So technically we don't read this scene, but it is described and we know that this happens in the book. I will say I love it. What an opening scene. The one power is sort of corrupted in the ways, but I don't actually think it calls the Black Wind. But yeah, I think channeling is discouraged. Since Matt wasn't left behind in the original books, this combo didn't happen. But yeah, I think it shows Rand well. However, I hate the idea that they add that like the dagger feeds on his corruption that's already there. No, Matt picked up the dagger in the books because he's stupid. He was a stupid teen, okay? Some teens are just stupid. Stupid. And it wasn't because he had like this darkness in him. So I don't understand why they're feeding that storyline. I don't really love that. Now, I don't think they actually see the Trollocs in the ways, but they do see this evidence on that waystone that they're there and Lan does think someone's following them. But I don't think right now we see Trollocs in the fa uh, in the ways. And they don't change to Faldar. I think they were always going there anyway. They are chased by the Black Wind, although it's a little different in the book. And they can't let it touch them or it completely like disintegrates their souls. But this whole like voice whispering thing is awesome. And that is in the books. It's just like the wind isn't on them yet and like that's pretty good again Nynaeve's parents aren't a thing like this and Nynaeve doesn't stop the black wind in the book they just end up running out of the ways but I do think this is actually a great setup to show that Nynaeve can only channel when she's angry and it's really big and bombastic but otherwise she's kind of useless so I don't hate it I do have to say like how are they going to explain that Trollocs are in the ways if we've only ever seen the ways opened by the one power again it's just like a like a slight broken thing that I don't know how they're going to explain so Lord Algamar's sister I don't think we see her until the great hunt and not in this capacity. I don't think she wrote to Moraine. Something might happen with this character next episode, so I won't say if it's different yet. I'll hold off. Min, okay, so we meet Min way earlier in the book in Barlon, which is a city we skipped, I think in episodes two or three, I've talked about it previously. Moraine would never send the Red Aja after Matt. Just saying. So Rand is actually originally the one who recognizes Pat and Fane, and it's in Barlon, which is where we meet Min, which I just mentioned. So we, we see Pat and Fane just like a lot earlier. Perrin is more skeptical of the way of the leaf in the book, I feel like, so I don't think he'd be kind of saying something like that, like more pro. I feel like they've kind of vastly changed Min's powers. In the books, she just sees symbols around people and like floating, and more often than not, she has no idea what they mean. She just makes a lot of like guesses. Occasionally she knows what they mean, occasionally she doesn't. But the whole darkness with like the firefly light thing is a thing in the book. Telling Moraine the Amarillancy is gonna be her downfall doesn't happen, and Moraine doesn't really expect Min to tell her who the dragon is, although she does consult a lot just in general. So you won't die if you go to the eye of the world and you aren't the dragon. That's just not a thing in the book. So like this whole conversation doesn't happen because they don't have to worry about dying going to the eye of the world. But I do like like Egwene supporting Moraine and Naive against it because that is kind of true to their book personalities. I also love Rand defending Matt like that also feels true to his personality. Okay men fighting over Egwene is not a thing. <laughs> Look if you're new here to this channel let me tell you how I feel about love triangles. I hate them. I hate them in any book. I just, this is so stupid. This scene is like, come on. I haven't agreed with people saying they've made this show CW, but this is like, why Why is this scene in here? Egwene Perrin, not a thing, never a thing. Uh, Nynaeve doesn't follow Lan or peek in on his family. He doesn't really like have a family he goes to here. So like this scene definitely doesn't happen. None of that happens. So there is a scene in the book, which is kind of like a confession of love for each other, but it's more like a, I can't because of my duty sort of thing. I honestly don't even know if they kiss. I don't think we see them kiss in the book during the scene. So they've definitely uh, like made it sexier for the show. And I kind of wish in the early next scenes, like Lan gives her something and I, I won't mention it. You know, it might be a next episode. So we'll wait for that. Honestly, let's be real. This angst is pretty true to the book. Like people, <laughs> keep saying that they're making it CW. I don't know if you've read the books in a while. Like the Rand and Egwene angst was real in the book. I think they made it better in the show, but yeah, this was here. Let's be honest with ourselves. I just finally, finally, I love all of these scenes. They're great. I just, I wish we were given more time. I wish these scenes were drawn out. I love them. But yeah, this isn't how it works. The flashback is like what Rand is going through the entire book. It's not so fast. I think now because of this episode, this isn't a spoiler to say, the entire book is from Rand's perspective, pretty much, Eye of the World, until later. So all of these kind of flashbacks we're having now 
happened in real time while we were with Rand. So you just had a lot more time with it. Now he does have a private convo with Min, but it's in Barlon, so it's a lot earlier. And she kind of does often say this thing like, hey, do you really want to know what I'm about to tell you? So that felt really true to character, but he doesn't ask her about being the dragon. Like that's not something he's concerned with at that point in the book. Again, Min's visions aren't like this. Min doesn't have this vision about Dragon Mount. This actually is a part of a prophecy that's pretty prominent in the book about a babe being born on Dragon Mount to like a certain mother and how that happens. It's pretty prominent in the book. It doesn't come from Min, but I do like that they're including it. So this isn't how it happens. Um, Moraine doesn't mask her bond because everyone actually goes into the Blight together. All of the two rivers, Five and Lan and Moraine all go in together, even though at that point they don't know who the dragon is, even though we as readers know who it is, but they don't. Also the Blight looks different. It's more sparse in the book and the trees are super creepy like that, but they're kind of further away and they're really dangerous. Like you can't touch them or they'll kill you. Okay, I'm gonna be honest guys, I really liked this episode. <laughs> I'm honestly really relieved. I was feeling really down after last episode, as you guys know, at the end, you guys thought I was gonna like quit because I felt bad about it. This is what I expected from the show, which is yes, is this different? Yes, pretty much no scene that happens in this episode happens in the book. However, it felt true to the spirit spirit of the book in terms of what is happening. I felt like the characters were acting like they did in the book and that made me happy. I will never criticize their Lan and Nynaeve scenes. I like them. I think they are good. Their romance makes sense in the show in a way that it didn't really make sense in the books to me and I really love the way that they're building that. And the way they humanize Lan in this episode feels more realistic to me, to his character, than the way they try to humanize him at the Warder funeral. Just my own personal feelings, I liked it better. Also, I don't hate this change about Rand and Moraine going into the Blight alone. It is very different, but it's giving Rand his time of day, which I think we really needed in the show. And I do also love Moraine and Rand's relationships in the book and how that develops. And I think this could give us a chance. Like I'm hoping in episode eight, that's what this is leading to. Now just for like criticisms, yes, I wish we'd had some of this Ram stuff earlier and I wish we had just a little bit more time with it. But overall, I will save my more detailed views for like a video later, but I enjoyed this episode. I really did. So that's a relief. I hope episode eight really finishes it off strong and we'll see. I would love to know what you guys thought of this episode. It was a highlight for me. It's probably with episode four as my two favorites of the season. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of this episode. I would really like to know. I'm looking forward to episode eight. If you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me. And if you wanna see what I'm currently reading as long well as other nerdy rants, you can follow me on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.